Quijano here, PugilistReport.com. I'm here with Aaron Heavy Metal Coley. Aaron, what can you tell me about your opponent for your next fight? Um, I really don't know much about him. I mean, I heard he was a, a tough cat. I mean, he got a decent amount of fights, probably about 40 something fights. He got 10 draws. So, he say he's tough, he ain't coming to lay down, so I'm just staying prepared. Now, I, before your last draw, I saw your last three fights, and you looked awesome in there. What happened in your last fight? Well, you know, the last guy, he was a tough cat. He stayed busy. I mean, I clearly threw the more power punches, I was more effective, but he just stayed busy. I believe he got a little hometown cooking, but it happened. You live and you learn. Now, now, since you went to his hometown and he had that advantage, are you looking to take it out of the judges' hands in this fight? Yes. I mean, just clearly what me and Boxing, pure boxing, hit, not getting hit. You feel me? If you go out, you go out, but most of all, I'm a boxer. the Hurricane Santiago. Wilkins, how you feel for this next fight? I feel good, man. I feel good, man. I'm ready to go, man. We've been training hard and, uh, you know, just excelling every day. Around these world champions, man. And, you know, you, you're around world champions and you become one, man. That's the, that's the mentality we have going into this fight, August 2nd. Now, besides Virgil Hunter, I noticed you got Eddie Croft working with you. That's got to be a definite plus. Exactly. Also, OG, the old man OG, man, who, who's been a big inspiration in my life, man. Uh, you know, the guy's been around for years and years, man. So we just continue to excel and continue to fight daily, man, and continue to just keep pushing, let God do his will, and, and, you know, in the camp. Now, this fight, proceeds from this fight are going to fight to erase MS. How close is this to your heart? Oh, real deep, man, real deep. As a matter of fact, this lady back home in Lorraine, Ohio, uh, her name is India Karim. Man, this this is a big shout out to her, man. You know she she's real close at heart. You know it's a lady that's been in my life for a long time since I was a kid and has seen me growing up and, and into this boxing. So it's something I want to give back to her, man, because she's dealing with something a tougher fight than I do. You know inside the ring and it's something that you know it, it, it's it's very touching in my heart, man. So this goes out to her and, and, and her life in which she's battled for many years, man. And it's something that I just want to give back to, to my community and her as well and anyone out there who's dealing with this and this. Going on. Now, a lot of fighters, they make sacrifices so they can get to where they want to be. I know it's hard for you being away from your family. Anything you want to say to them? Oh, uh, I want to give a big, big shout out to my fiance back at home, Megan. I love you, baby. You know, I do this for us, for our family, for our kids. You know, it's tough. You know, it's tough being away from my family. But at the end of the day, man, I just want my kids to be able, when they grow up, to say, you know, my daddy fought hard. Not only inside the ring, but outside the ring as well. So I want to give a big shout out to my kids, Xavier, Wilkins Jr. Bilal Mahasan, he's fighting on the August 2nd card, the fight to erase uh, MS. Bilal, I heard your story is real inspirational. You want to tell me about it? Uh, man, there's so much about so much about my story, and there's so there's so many different aspects of my story. So long, so much to it. I did, uh, I did ten, I served ten years in prison, ten years and two months exactly, and. Um, I rehabilitated myself, um, did a lot of uh, self-evaluation. Um, I was already a professional boxer before I got locked up. I was 3-0. I had already fought on ESPN2 Friday Night Fights, and um, I was 3-0. And, and uh, I, I decided to come home and um, continue on with my professional boxing career and uh, to try to inspire you or uh, trouble you who are going through exactly what I went through before I got locked up. So here I am.
Uh, I hear a lot of good things about you. I look forward to the fight. I also hear that you're this lyrical poet. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Uh, I was rapping uh, before I got locked up. And uh, as a youngster, you know, I was rapping before rapping was really big. I was rapping in the early, in the mid-80s since I was real young. Okay. And that's when positive rap was really, was really big. And then um, when it took a, a negative turn, I started uh, drifting off and rapping about negative things. Okay. And um, it was for that reason that I decided to stop my rapping career. But um, I still have that talent. I still have that ability. But um, it was just that uh, boxing, I mean, uh, rapping today, uh, the music industry, I don't respect it today. Um, a lot of this filthy, parasitical music, um, what I call counterproductive music, um, um, negative, um, talking negative about women, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of women abuse the music. Um, the B word, I don't use that. It's nowhere in my vocabulary. Um, I really respect women, you know. I can't say how somebody could disrespect a woman and, and say that he loves his mother, you know, or he loves his daughter. Right. So I don't, I don't want nothing to do with music um, unless somehow it takes some type of turn for a posit in a positive way. But everything that I'm about is just positivity, man, and growth, and, you know, development. So your, your thing back in the day was like for Cool Herc, Sugar Hill Gang, Curtis Blow, that type? Yeah, yeah I like the, I like Dougie Fresh. Dougie Fresh. Yeah, I like Dougie Fresh. I like KRS-One. Um, I like Productions. Tupac was my favorite, one of my favorite, the early Tupac, you know, when he first came out right. with a positive message, you know. And to me, you know, that's just, I think there's a fear going on, man. I think it's a whole lot of cowards all over the place, man. And people are scared to stand up, whether it's against a government corruption, a policy, um, something that's negative, their neighborhood, a, a friend, you know. People just scared to stand up and just, you know, be righteous. Righteous is just so, we don't want nothing to do with nothing righteous. That's, what, that's, that's the mentality out here, you know. So somebody got to stand up, you know, and I want to be one of those. Well, what do you know about your opponent for August 2nd? Um, I don't know much about him at all. I originally thought I was going to fight this guy who's like, I think his record was like 8-0 or 10-0. I mean, uh, whoever, you know, whoever they put in front of me, man, I'm, I'm ready to fight. Uh, I've always taken prospects. I've always fought against the promoter's guy, you know, so I never really cared about who I fought. Um, I don't really know much about this guy. I watched one of his fights. I only watched it maybe twice. Um, he, he's in a world of trouble. Okay. He's in a world of trouble. All right. And lastly, anything you want to say to your fans? Yeah. Um, I, I, what I want to say is everybody just uh, keep it positive. Uh, I, I see the positive movement growing. You know, um, don't be scared. Don't be, don't be afraid of peace. Don't be afraid of love. It's not corny. It's something that's strong. It's something that's powerful. You know, um, we should be more so afraid of evil. You know, that's out there. And uh, we're coming to win. Team Rebellious, baby. Let's go. August 2nd. All right. All right good luck. We'll go to the fight. Thanks.